Hey guys, today I'm going to give you a review of the new Cervelo S5 Disc 2019. This is the first one sold in Texas. Not that I really, not that that's why I got it, uh, but it's a cool story. It comes to 172.5. This is a, uh, a size 56. This is 17 and a half pounds, which is actually not bad for an aero road bike. So how does this bike ride? It comes with 52, 39, and an 1130 in the back, and it feels amazing. I, I just have to say, I mean, it climbs really well. I've been hitting hills that I normally hit on my way to work, and it's so much easier. Instead of coming up out of the saddle, I'm in the saddle most of the time, and when I get up to the top of the hill, I'm not as gassed as normal. Let's talk about the, the saddle. It came with a different saddle, uh, but I chose to go with this uh, Pro Stealth. This seat post, obviously very aerodynamic, um, really easy to adjust the tilt here with this this knob But the thing I'm sure probably most of you want to talk about is this this front end up here so Front end is really interesting. They decided to go with instead of a single uh, stem a split stem in the front um, They say that it, that allows the airflow to come over the top tube much easier and instead of creating a whole lot a bunch of uh, unnecessary wake up there Sure, why not? <laughs> uh, at first, when you see it in pictures, you might think that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Um, and some people might, and that's totally fine. In person, it's sexy as hell, uh, I gotta say. It looks like an integrated barn stem, it's not. It's two-piece barn stem. The front end actually can tilt five degrees down or five degrees up. And the whole thing comes apart in three bolts. Three bolts and that whole thing comes off, and so it's a lot, eas it's a lot easier to take apart to travel with. Uh, also, the fork is actually this that comes up in front. This whole front end is able to turn, which is supposed to be more aerodynamic as well. The other cool thing is these the spacers. So, because these spacers are two pieces and the whole thing comes apart in three bolts, you can take this whole top off, take a spacer out or two out or put some back in, and then put the bolts back in and you're good to go. I mean, the whole thing takes maybe five to ten minutes. It does come with the Garmin mount out in front. I have an element bolt. The cool thing is it fits the Garmin and the element bolt. So you don't have to buy a new adapter if you have an element. It fits, which is great. You just have to turn the, uh, the actual adapter. I put on these bottle cages, these really light carbon giant bottle cages. And I also have the Garmin Vector 2 pedals. I just decided instead of going with the the Garmin 3 to keep my Garmin 2 that I had on my last bike. I spent enough on this guy. I don't need to spend any more on a power meter that I already have. So how does it ride? Uh, like a dream, I must say. The bottom bracket on this thing is the stiffest thing I've ever ridden. As, as soon as you put power into it, it just takes off. It does take a little bit more effort to get it up to speed, but I mean just a little bit. Uh, and and once you're there, you hold it really well. At 17 and a half pounds, it's not that heavy. Maybe after 100 miles, you'll you'll notice it. 80 miles, you'll kind of notice it if you're trying to do hills after that, after you know doing efforts. But uh, for the most part, because of this gearing um, and because of the way it cuts through the wind, anything over 10 miles an hour, you really notice a lot of aerodynamic benefit. Uh, so, and here in Austin, we don't have a whole lot of, of hills where you have to go under 10 miles an hour. The braking is incredible. Uh, I never once had a worry that I would stop in time. I mean, you stop on a dime on this thing. I went with Ultegra because it was $3,000 cheaper and I don't care about 300 grams. You know, Dura Ace is great, but if you have the money, but it's not really worth it to me. This bike is actually really comfortable. It comes with 25 mil tires. On my TCR, I had 28 mil tires so that was a little noticeable but the jump from 25 to 28 is massive uh, in comfort so I have 25s I might be able to fit 28s it says that it, there's clearance for 28s 
I don't know, it's actually pretty tight. Not necessarily here, but up here on the fork, it's pretty tight. Uh, so I don't know that I'd be able to fit 28s, at least not with Continental 4000s, because those inflate to really like 30s. Also, there's tubes in here, even though these, these wheels are tubeless ready. And so if I went tubeless, that'd be even more comfortable. But I did 60 miles today and I felt like I was not beat up at all. The front end is a, a lot stiffer than my TCR, so you do feel a little bit more. But again, if I was able to put 28s or, or go tubeless, I, I don't think that that would be an issue. So the two main things to look out for on this bike um, are the through axle threads and the, the, the hub on these uh, DT Swiss wheels. So I had a flat on my first ride. I haven't had a flat in months, but I got a flat. Um, and so I was changing the wheel and um, when I pulled the wheel off, actually the whole free hub body came off. I checked with, uh, with my shop and the, the guy there said, yeah, the, the way these, these hubs are, the, this, whole, this whole cassette is together. So it didn't like fall apart when it came off, but the, the whole cassette started coming off. So whenever you, you change the wheel, just make sure that this, that the cassette is actually, you know, seated on there well, um, because it will slide off. You can't just pull the whole thing off. The other thing is, are the, as I mentioned, the through axle threading. Uh, these are quick release through axles, so when you unlatch it and pull it out, there is a there's some threading on the side with the latch, and the more you loosen it, the tighter it actually gets. So if you loosen it all the way, it actually comes off of the threading. So just make sure that whenever you you um, are putting it back in, that it's actually seated uh, into the threading correctly. Because uh, I actually stripped the first thread and had a serious problem trying to get the wheel back on. I almost called my wife to have her come pick me up. So uh, I actually, I got it back on, it was fine. I actually took it into the shop, had them check it out and they said, yeah, it's fine. It's just that first thread, not a big deal. But that, that's something serious to watch out for uh, because this, I think it's a, a new type of, of uh, through axle system. That's it. Thanks for watching.